Welcome folks. Today I'm going to talk to you about a GitHub repository. So if we go to github.com slash rjv hyphen quantum, it will lead you to this website. And then we scroll down to the pinned section and I have pinned a repository called free education. So this is a repository that I formed into a table. So the table you will see is full of these curated resources most of which are simulations and all of which are open access. It's open to the public and it's free to use. You don't have to, you don't have to pay for anything. It's cost free. So there are some more sections here on the bottom, starting from the DIY electronics tutorials from the Great Scott Lab, all the way down here. These are more advanced and more interactive, meaning it involves you building something. Mm -hmm. And the 3D animations also help you to visualize what is happening to obtain these kind of advanced techniques. So the animations are provided by the YouTube channels, Lessics and Branch Education. Amazing YouTube channels that are, I believe, heavily heavily make heavy use of the blender software blender animation software and well it's blender 3d and you can use it for animation but anyways there's a section here called physics reimagined they also do animations for quantum phenomena and spectroscopy tex techniques there's a section for microscopy techniques and, and things like that all in this resource and if you scroll through it, you will see that there's a section here on the left side that says Quantum Made Simple. There's a section for Quantum Effects, Quantum 101. There's a section for Quantum Research, Bose-Einstein Condensate, Crystallography, and then it segues perfectly into Microscopy. There's the more common, well-known Microscopy techniques up front. And then it starts getting into the different electron microscopy techniques and then tunneling microscopy, scanning tunneling microscopy. And so you can visualize all of these techniques. And if you were to click on any one of these techniques, you will see that there's an animation provided in the YouTube link done by Physics Reimagined. And there you have it. So the scanning tunneling microscope as I just mentioned, is actually one, one such example of which you could follow a tutorial on how to make one. So there is one here by Hackaday. If you learn how to visualize that spectroscopy technique, then you can go to this DIY scanning tunneling microscope tutorial on Hackaday from Dan Berard. And if we click on this, it will take us to hackaday.io. And here is a picture set up of the homemade scanning electron, I mean, scanning tunneling microscope. <clears throat> and then you can view the arrangements of atoms on a flat surface. Could be of metal or some other solid object. You can also look at the microscope, the microstructure if you wish. I believe this is a technique that uses piezoelectric components and a bunch of machines block parts of either aluminum or, or some similar piece of metal. And you can see like some of the related topics that are listed here. <laughs> and these are is basically a low cost STM achieving atomic resolution with a piezo buzzer skin. There it is. <laughs> one of them so if you want to learn how that works you simply just go to this resource I just mentioned from physics reimagined and then look at those techniques for scanning transmission or scanning tunneling microscopy wonderful and then there are other resources that focus on like semiconductor circuit education and some you can use as a simulator and you can even download the 3D models. You can do SPICE modeling. SPICE 
code, and you can run it on there. So if we were to open this Silhouiz, so on Wizard, for example, you would see that the simulation is immediately running. You can change the input voltage and how that characteristic, how the, how that changes the characteristics of the device, their performance, and so forth. You can see the advanced mode here for the spice, spice code. You can edit it in some word processor and then import or paste the paste the new code on here and then run it. There are more than enough presets you can play with here and you can even upload your own models and you can download them as I mentioned you can turn it turn it into a 3d model yeah so the 3d model is something you can do in blender so if we were to open blender here uh, let me see to show you this example, I think this is a great example. We'll delete the cube and then we'll import an STL. And then we go to downloads and then Silhouiz import STL. If we zoom out, we'll see that we have now imported this 3D model. And now we can look at Take a closer look at a close-up view of that of that inverter that we just downloaded, and then you can render this to your own heart's content. Add textures to it, split up these sections into smaller pieces, and then add individual colors to whatever you want on here. So, simply, of course, you can go to the materials properties section, add some color select the materials we can make this look kind of like silicon like an oxidized silicon you can decrease the roughness make it more metallic and then voila there you go now it looks like oxidized silicon <laughs> so mm, wonderful okay so that's just an example you can download the model it just Click, you just click on it and then boom, download. You can load whatever other kinds of examples on here and then just download it. Yep. So that's one example. It's tiny tape out to talk to talk to you about semiconductor circuit education. There's ray optics, which is always a fun one. You can simply direct. You can simply run the simulation right here in the browser you just launch it and then you have a light source you have a point point source of light a beam of light like a collimator we can select one point and then another point and we can increase the ray density we can add a piece of glass like so and we can stretch the glass <laughs> this is great we can force it to do certain things and then try to trace what that would how that would behave according to the shape of the lens and then we can add mirrors we can we can create circular mirrors that bend the light somewhere else look at that look at that There's so much fun to be had here <laughs> and then Yes. Okay. So if we scroll out of that and we go back to the table, we have some other ones that we can play around with. Like O Physics, we just opened up the other day. The CU Boulder simulation page. Some more geometric optics ones here. Ones for chemistry, mathematics, earth science, biology. All kinds of simulations. You just click on one of them and then press play, and then now you can play with the simulation in the browser. All good to go. And it's got some nice sound effects. Oh, I think I, I think I set the 
these solar bodies too far. <laughs> Either way, I mean, there's so much, so much more you can play with. Mm, you can look at Lessig's branch education, physics reimagined. We just talked about those. There are all the animations here to explain all the technologies, different types, types of technologies, and even mechanical equipment to you in great detail from a link from a uh, language or I should say a engineer perspective engineering perspective other channels branch education great details into all these technologies some of the more recent ones on there as well different kinds of new hardware technology used in memory the newest smartphones, graphics drivers, and so forth. It's all on here. So, worth having a look. Uh huh. So, let's get back out of that, and then we'll, we'll look at Great Scott's DIY tutorials here in a moment. So, these are the DIY tutorials. There's some there's some costs associated with this because you have to obtain parts either by tearing tearing down or taking scrap parts of other electronics that probably don't work or perhaps going to a recycle center and, and getting some scrap electronics and harvesting parts to build your own DIY audio amplifier at home mm -hmm. stuff like that. So either way, it's a great it's a great start into getting involved in electronics because there's so many principles of electronics that are taught just in just in audio amplification in itself. So there you go. And then there's the modification of the Ender 3 cost effective 3D printer so that you can do ADM machining, electric discharge machining. You can cut into metal using all these sparks. Look at that. <laughs> Excellent. And then you have EDM machining. So if we look at EDM machining or wire EDM, which is the most common one, wire EDM machining is this technique in manufacturing used to cut into really thick pieces of metal using, well, a big old electrical spark that is controlled within a within an electrolyte solution. You can see here. You're using all this, all these fluids constantly flowing over the material or submerged, and then you have a, literally a piece of wire that's charged up. And as the wire is running through this material, that electrical discharge that's contained in this small area will actually cut away at the metal. No matter how thick the metal is, it will cut through it. Yeah, so that's how that works. You can cut through any any thickness of metal with this technique, and you get some some really great precision out of it. The smoothness of the cut as well is also unbeatable. Uh, let's see, what am I saying? The the smoothness does become unbeatable when it gets polished. Because you can polish the machine parts out of uh, after cutting it with this electric discharge machining method, and then there you go. So we have this fluid flowing down this wire, and then you have this continuous wire that's fed with a voltage uh, and power, and then you get this wire that's just sparking, sparking along whatever contacted surface there is on this against this piece of metal that you're trying to cut and normally this technique would be quite expensive because well the the whole setup involves a lot of manufacturing in itself like there are manufacturers who manufact who build these manufacturing machines <laughs> so it's a manufacturer manufacturer who makes who manufactures the manufacturing machines, if that makes sense. <laughs>
Oh, I, I need to save this picture. It's pretty great. And perhaps one of these other ones. Let me see. Maybe, maybe this one. Yeah, it's great. Anyways, I, I really hope you get a good insight on how useful these education resources are. And the other thing I forgot to mention is that wire EDM machine price. The price of this machine, this a typical machine, it says here, costs anywhere from $99,000 upwards of up to like $150,000 US dollars. And uh, there are some that cost as low as $19,000. But that's that's nowhere near the cost of this setup, where you just pay. Uh, I think it's a hundred. Wait, let me double check on the price of this thing. Ender three the price. So you can buy this for a hundred and sixty nine dollars. It says under under two hundred dollars for this three D this this three D printer. Yeah couple of used ones here and then you add these you 3d print the components and then the power supply in itself there's a tutorial on how to build that here as well A repository for how to make it. Mm -hmm. So I suppose there's some cost to this, but it's nowhere. I, don't, I wouldn't think that this is anywhere near a thousand dollars. Nope. So you know, it starts to get it starts to get kind of costly. But these are techniques to try to bring down the cost. And definitely, if you were to try to obtain a scanning tunnel microscope. From industry, one of its manufacturers. It's, it's these kind of tools are expensive, especially ones that require vacuum, vacuum chambers. Those those kind of equipment, usually in the millions, millions of U.S. dollars. This is no way, but having a way to do it DIY is is powerful. <laughs> Not only just for yourself, but the fact that you can actually use it to to look at atoms. So there you have it. And I'm not sure if we talked about this yet, but there's Comsol on here. There's free Comsol server, Aurora, to look at these superconducting magnet simulations in the browser. You can run it and then save the quality, the high quality figures, in your computer. You can save it, and then you can. Put it on a presentation powerpoint if you want it so there you go anyways i hope that was an interesting explanation for you the grok block is always on here of course talk about quantum information the different kind of ways that we can represent a logical qubit in this case we can look at the zero state and the one state here on the south and the north pole of this sphere and then there's a 2d projection of this of this phase so there's zero phase there's pi over two phase which is i mean this is in radian so this is 90 degrees and then pi phase is 180 and then three pi over two is 270 degrees so if you were to apply any of these standard quantum poly poly gates then how does that change? So if we were to apply this quantum knot, or otherwise known as poly x gate, you will see that it changes a zero state into a one state. But it does not change the phase information whatsoever. There's no, we apply that knot gate to a zero phase. There's no change in the phase. Only the probability relative to whatever reference state is being used. <laughs> and if we apply a poly Y gate instead, then we get a change of both the 0 to 1 state as well as 
a change from a zero phase to a pi over two phase or 90 degree phase so simultaneously you have two different changes going on and then the probability of course is always just relative to not I mean the probability of the of this the quantum state is does not rely on this phase information but it's more reliant on on how close something is to either one of these poles the north or the south it doesn't care what's happening at the equator or anything else in between <laughs> uh, when I say anything else between I mean anything around this around this circumference <laughs> but it does care about what's happening from north to south is what this probability is and then if we were to apply a phase change gate to zero to the zero state then nothing happens the poly z gate is a phase change gate phase flip phase flip to be marked and if we were to ch start off in a one state and we were to apply a poly Z or a phase flip, then yes, we are going to get a flip from zero phase to a pi phase or 180 degrees. Boom. But the one state in itself will not change, just the phase. And you will see that the probability according uh, relative or when reference to zero does not change either, just the phase. And if we were to play around with the y, you'll see that you do have a change back to the zero state or zero 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 phase, and then you also have a flip from the zero or a flip to the zero from the one state, and then you can see the equation representation of that change. And so as you get more and more comfortable playing with this block sphere and even picking different points around the block sphere and watching how that phase is changed based on where you pick on the surface of this block sphere, then you get a better intuition of what of how that quantum state is changed based off of what kind of quantum gate is applied here. These fractional S gates and the, and the T gates the Hadamard and so forth. And if there's any rotation according to the different axes, such as X, Y, and Z, you can modify, you can monitor that here. And then eventually that leads you to an IBM Kiskit certification. So let's say you wanted to get professionally certified and recognized by the industry to get involved in quantum computing, then this is something you could do. So if we go to IBM certified, Associate Quantum Developer, or IEM Certified Associate Developer Quantum Computation using Qiskit. This page here, you will see that there's a registration for an exam, and this goes on year round. And their main focus is your ability to perform operations on a quantum circuit or a set of quantum circuits, and these different operations that are performed on here is are things that you would have to have an intuition for to some extent and playing around with the block sphere where, where'd it go mm, the grok block you play around with this some more you will get better and better at solving these quantum circuits and then you will get more comfortable with the operators as well as the visualization methods. So the block sphere, of course, it is in itself from the Gop, the Grok block. That is a visualization, and so that's worth a lot in quantum computing. I mean, that's the block sphere, the block vector that you get from there, and then there are other ones focused on multiple qubits, which you can do with the block sphere or Q sphere. I mean. And then there are there are density matrices that can also represent multiple qubits, and well, the more you get comfortable with these principles, then the more and more 
you get closer into being a quantum computing specialist, quantum computing engineer, quantum computing developer, and so forth. So this is a great first step into that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that's the rest of the tutorials. There are some more that are advanced down here focused on quantum hardware engineering, quantum device fabrication, some of these that I made myself. And then there's a section here on technical Python codes for performing different calculations based off of certain te topics. There's an entire list on here, actually. If we click on this, we'll see that there's an entire list of textbooks. There are no textbooks on here, but this is rather a textbook companion code list. So if we were to click here and say, I want to look for how to how to compute an eigenvalue, then it will look for some results in this textbook companion list. And then here's a textbook by Professor Gilbert Strang from MIT. And then here's a section, a book he wrote called Linear Algebra and its Applications. And then here's some example Python scripts on how to solve problems within that chapter using Python code. So you can solve these eigenvectors and eigenvalues using this inspiration from here. And you can look at which libraries are required to perform such a, such a calculation and then view the results. Boom. And then there's, there's a list of more examples here. You can take inspiration from and even adapt some of these to your own code and modify them. And boom. You learn. There you have it. That's just one example. There are many others you can explore on your own. Let's click. Let's go back. <laughs> and there's MIT Open Courseware. This is a go-to open source, open source, open access. I mean, open access education resource very trustworthy you can learn quantum mechanics there if you want i wrote some other tutorials on quantum hardware engineering there are quantum hardware associated topics and rel relative tables on here as well <laughs> okay and then you can explore this other one, which is more advanced, it's on how to design a quantum chip, a quantum processor, and then there's some resources you can read on that that are open to the public. They're open access. And then here are some images from my laboratory, my cleaner, on how to build such quantum devices from scratch. How not just to design them, but also to actually fabricate them. There's a whole process for that. Yeah. So that's it. That's all I got for today. Enjoy yourself out there and best of luck.